Hello everyone. I'm Abhinashli Tyaharaja. I work as a senior software engineer at WSO2. I welcome you all to the webinar on what's new with WSO2 IBT Server 510. This webinar will be conducted by myself and Madhuranga Sirivartana, who is a technical lead at WSO2. To begin with, let me give a quick introduction on WSO2 Identity Server. WSO2 Identity Server is an API-driven open source IAM product designed to help you build effective customer identity and access management solutions. It is based on open standards such as SAML, OAuth, and OIDC with the deployment options of on-premise, cloud, and hybrid. It supports Complex IAM requirements given its high extensibility. WSO2 Identity Server includes the core features of the product, extensions, and connectors released under the Apache Software License version 2.4, which is one of the most developer friendly licenses. WSO2 Identity Server provides secure identity and access management for enterprise web applications, services, and APIs by managing identity and entitlements of the user securely and efficiently. Identity Server provides the capabilities of authentication and authorization of users, single someone, identity federation, provisioning, access delegation, adaptive authentication, user management, and much more. Let's move on to the topic of this webinar to know What's new with WSO2 Identity Server 5.10? This is our latest version, which was released a few weeks back. In this release, we have introduced a bunch of new features, which are passwordless authentication support, an improved user portal, new RESTful APIs for user self services and server management, scope based authorization for internal REST APIs, and unique user identifier across the system. Also, this release contains improvements in the existing features and performance. In the following sections, we will be looking into the newly introduced features one by one in detail. As the first feature, let's look into the passwordless authentication. Passwords are the very common and traditional way used to verify the identity of a user. But it has drawbacks which open the door to alternative mechanisms. We think passwords are secrets, but they cannot be kept as secrets because we share it with the server. That's why passwords are called shared secrets. Passwords are vulnerable to a variety of attacks such as brute force attacks, replay attacks, social engineering, phishing, or malware. Breaches happen due to weak or stolen passwords. Since passwords are shared secrets, both the user and server should be responsible to secure it from identity thieves. In order to prevent breaches, we shouldn't use the same password for all the accounts. So, it's already hard to remember multiple passwords. In addition to that, the passwords should be complex, which need to be long, should contain combination of letters, numbers, and special characters. And we cannot keep the same password for a long time. We should be changing it frequently. Considering the number of accounts an individual needs to maintain, creating and remembering passwords is a huge frustration. Now we have passwordless authentication to prevent us from the overheads of passwords. Passwordless authentication means verifying the identity of a user using a proof of possession such as TOTP or hardware token, a biometric identifier, or a knowledge factor instead of a password. It improves security and user experience. 
users no longer need to create and remember complex secrets. Since there will be no passwords to be compromised, breaches will be reduced. Passwords are expensive since it requires constant maintenance and monitoring. So, removing passwords will reduce the total cost of ownership. With passwordless authentication, admin gets the control of security and complete visibility over the identity and access management since there is no space for passwords based attacks. Pido2 is a phishing proof passwordless authentication protocol developed as a joint effort between the Pido Alliance client to authenticate a protocol and the World Wide Web Portal Web Authentication Specification. Fido2 offers a single factor passwordless sign in experience, which eliminates the hassle of remaining, remembering and typing usernames and passwords. Utilizing public key cryptography, Fido2 has replaced passwords with biometrics or plugin authenticators or security keys to help create a better user experience. In traditional credential management, a password is created and stored in a server during the sign-up or registration process. So, when it comes to the login or authentication process, the relying party matches the password given by the end user against the previously stored password. Video 2 has eliminated this model of storing user credentials in a server, whereas it makes sure that the cryptographic login credentials never leave the user's device and are never stored in a server. This security model has eradicated all sorts of password theft and the risk of phishing attacks. Video 2 uses asymmetric cryptography to authenticate users in a passwordless manner. The three main factors that drive this whole process are the FIDO authenticator, which can be biometrics, security key, smartphone, and etc. The client or browser that operates as the mediator and the relying party. FIDO2 is achieved with two steps, which are registration and authentication. During the registration process, a relying party specific credential key pair is generated in the authenticator. The public key will be sent to the relying party and the private key never leaves the authenticator. During the authentication process, when the user makes the request to log in, the user will be prompted to provide a PIN or biometric. This triggers the authenticator to send an assertion to prove that the user possesses a private key. Then, the relying party validates the assertion against the public key and allows the user to log in upon successful validation. The benefits of enabling passwordless authentication with WSO2 identity server arm, the application can be easily configured within a few seconds. The FIDO2 devices can be registered with a single step. Ensuring user-friendly authentication leads to, leads to customer satisfaction. Let's see an example use case for better understanding. Say, the admin user configures FIDO2 authenticator for the Travelocity application in Identity Server. Now the user Alex wants to access the application. So he logs into the self-care portal and registers a FIDO2 compliant fingerprint sensor in his MacBook. Later, when he tries to access the application, he will be redirected to the identity server for authentication and prompted for FIDO2 authentication. When he touches the fingerprint sensor, he will be logged into the application. A demo on this will be shown after the next topic, which is user portal. That will be conducted by Madhuranga. If you remember the previous identity server versions, this is what we had as the self-care user portal. 
we have replaced this with this brand new one. We have rewritten the complete application with React to have a modern, responsive, and appealing user interface. At the same time, our UX engineers have done, a, done an excellent job in making the interfaces as user-friendly as possible. If you have followed our 5.9 release, we have introduced a bunch of REST APIs to cater to end-user interactions. This new user portal is using those new REST APIs. If you want to theme or brand self-care user portal, now you don't need to touch any of the code. You can just do it by using CSS files. This self-care user portal application supports easy localization as well. So this is one more step towards reaching the excellence in developer-focused CIA. The new self-care user portal will support almost all the features supported by the previous dashboard, such as user profile management, password reset, manage authentication factors, monitor and manage active use sessions, so on and so forth. We also have introduced the new application listing capability, which will be shown in the demonstration next. Now, let's see a demonstration of the features we have discussed so far. Let's start with configuring the application. I have logged into the management console and I have already configured the application. There are two special things you have to check about an application in this release. The first one is the authentication type configuration in local and outbound authentication configuration. You can enable local authentication and use Fido to enable passwordless authentication to your application. See, enabling passwordless authentication is that much easy. The next, the next new feature is you can make it visible in the self-care user portal. What you have to do is enable the discoverable application option and provide the access URL and the logo URL. For access URL, you can provide the home page of the application. Now, the configs in the application are done. Now, it's time for an end user to use the configured application. Since the user is not configured any FIDO device for him, he needs to log into the self-care user portal and configure the FIDO device. In the security section, you can config configure your multi-factor authentication via security device option. You can click, click the plus sign, select the device you want to uh, use, which is the built-in fingerprint sensor in this case. Tap on the fingerprint sensor.
add a name and you are good to go. Now, you can go to the application section, which we discussed previously. This will list the discoverable applications the administrator has configured. Select the already ap configured application from there, and you will go to the home page of the application. From there, you can click the login button, and you will be prompted to tap on the Fedora device. When you tap on the device, you will be logged in. Now, secure login is that much easy. So that's all from the demo. Now, Abhilash will continue explaining about enhanced test APIs. Test APIs are based on representational state transfer technology, which is, which is an architectural style and approach to communication, often used in web services development. Prior to our last release, most of the APIs we had were soap based. In IS590, we have introduced a new set of REST APIs for end user interactions. In this release, we have introduced more new APIs for end user interactions and also extended to administrative functionalities. We believe REST APIs for end user interaction and form management capabilities are essential for building both on-premise and cloud-based solutions. REST is generally fast and uses less bandwidth. It's also easier to integrate with existing applications. This enables developers to work faster and easier. These are favored over SOAP APIs, which are almost outdated. All REST API schemas are defined as Swagger 2.0 documents. This makes it easy to understand and consume the APIs. That has the advantage of inherent SDK support that comes with Swagger. We have introduced new REST APIs for the operations listed here. Identity provider management, email template management, user store management, key store management, Application Management, Open ID Connect Scope Management, Governance Connectors Management, Script Library Management, User Discoverable Application Management, and finally, Claim Metadata Management. And also, we have done improvements for the following existing APIs. Introduced Federated Account Association Support for User Account Association API. Improved FIDO2 APIs with the addition of operations to trigger FIDO2 usernameless device registration and to update display name of device. And Auto Scope Management APIs has been redesigned and improved. To have a better understanding of our REST APIs, please refer to our documentation. We have used Swagger UI in our documentation. Swagger UI capabilities can be used to understand and try out the APIs. Here you can see the look of the API documentation. To provide a quick experience on the APIs, we have attached a Postman collection for every APIs at the end of the document. It has been designed in such a way that can be used with a locally running identity server. So 
you can simply download and try it out. Let's move into our next feature, score-based authorization for internal REST APIs. WSO2 Identity Server supports API authentication using Auth2 Common Flows, where users can obtain a token using an Auth2 flow and use it to invoke the API. Authorization for the APIs in WSO2 Identity Server is enforced at the endpoint level using permissions. Each secure endpoint has a predefined minimum level of permission that is required to be able to consume the endpoint. In order to access a particular endpoint, the user has to belong to a role that includes and defined permissions. WSO2 Identity Server now supports code-based API authorization for internal REST APIs. When obtaining a token to consume the API, you can define the scope corresponding to the permission required to consume the API. The given table shows how the permissions are mapped with defined scopes. For the complete version of this table, please do check out our documentation. Scope-based authorization is a standard way of Auth2 to delegate the authorization in a restricted manner when developing applications to access the APIs. Otherwise, if a user has permission, any operations can be performed using any access token without any limitations. Let me explain the flow with an example use case. Say the user Alex belongs to a role called sysadmin, which has the permission to view identity providers via internal REST APIs in WSO2 identity server. Now he wants to delegate this to his application. Alex then obtains an auto access token from identity server. He provides the scope as internal IDP view in the token request. Alex application then calls internal REST APIs to view identity providers while providing the obtained access token. Identity server validates the provided access token and then identifies the bounded scope, which is internal IDP view, then grants permission to view identity server. The next feature we will be discussing is the introduction of unique user ID across the system. In the previous releases of the identity server, we had limitations in renaming username, multi-attribute logins, etc. The main reason for these limitations is in the platform level, we didn't have a separate identifier to identify the user. We were relying on the username for this identification. Scheme implementation had a separate identifier, but we didn't have a straightforward way to use this identifier in Scheme as the identifying the platform. So we have introduced the unique user identifier across the platform to cater these limitations in the future release. Now the scheme implementation will use will also be using platform identifier rather than depending on a separate identifier. As we have discussed, WSO2 Identity Server 5.10 has feature additions, feature improvements, and bug fixes. So that's why you need to migrate to the Identity Server 5.10. If you are not using WSO2 Identity Server, why should you try it? WSO2 Identity Server is a fully open source IAM and it doesn't have a vendor lock-in and allows quick innovation. It supports 
multiple industry standards and out of the box it supports most of the IAM use cases. It's extensible, developer friendly and API driven. WSO2 provides 24 by 7 development support and production support. If you are planning to migrate, we guarantee backward compatibility of APIs from the previous releases. We have a step-by-step -step guide for migration in our documentation. So what's next? In the next release of the identity server, which will be 510 will introduce new revamped admin portal. It will bring all the UX enhances similar to the self-care portal. In the same time, it will introduce symmetric encryption support for internal data. Tenant-wise, teaming for login portal and user portal and Tenant qualified URL support for identity endpoints will also be introduced. You can try out our latest product version 5.10. You can download the product from our document page and try the documentation from our documentation site. You can report issues in GitHub product repository. You can ask questions in Stack Overflow and Slack. And also, you can use our public mailing list. You can tell us about what you think about our product on Twitter. If you have any questions, we can take them now. So we have a question. Can we restrict the discoverable apps shown in user portal according to user permission? So the current implementation doesn't support it. We will be adding such capabilities in future releases. So we have one more question. Do you support step up authentication? Yes, uh, we have introduced this capability uh, some time back, uh, which will be, which can be uh, implemented using our adaptive authentication. If you want more information about our adaptive authentication capabilities, you can visit our documentation. And uh, there are a bunch of uh, use cases defined in the documentation. So we have one more question. What are the backend technologies that used in this production? So for, for the uh, product backend, we mainly use Java. And uh, for the, for the uh, management console and previous UIs, we were using JSP-based uh, uh, JSP UIs and for the new self-care user portal, we have used React. The next question is, I'm currently testing out SAML implementation with WSO2IS as the identity provider using PHP or Java. Do you have some documentation and clear step-by-step -step instructions you can share from start to end? So in our documentation, we have the instructions that, uh, to configure the uh, co configurations in the identity server side. Uh, so we are revamping our documentation to provide the instructions that need to be done in the application side as well. So, the next question is, can I use 
multi factor authentication and passwordless with any auth flow even call from api in a native mobile app so we can incorporate multi factor authentication and passwordless authentication from uh, authorization grant type so the native mobile app so the recommended approach for uh, native mobile apps currently is using public client uh, mode in authorization code grant type so yes you can uh, simply use that uh, flow in your mobile application we have another question do you offer rest api swagger file also so in our documentation as we have shown the documentation is based on swagger definitions so from the documentation you also can uh, download the swagger definition and uh, you can if you want to test the api you can use the predefined postman collections so we have one quest one more question this wso2 can run on open shift easily yes uh, our product can run on any container management system without uh, any effect uh, the next question is this wso2 provide password recovery via sms or fido so the current uh, mechanism for password recovery we are using is uh, email based and challenge question based so we are in the process of incorporating sms based password recovery into a product as well uh, so you can expect that feature in a future release the next question is which version of wso2 apim can be used with this version of identity server so the api manager version which is capable which is compatible with wso2 5710 is api manager 310 so i think that's all the questions we have today so this is the team behind the development of the product uh, due to the current unfortunate situation we had to take the release photo using zoom we have a bunch of people missing in the photo too so thank you everyone thank you for joining